In this question, the functions defined are confusing for a couple of reasons. First, m is a variable, and it's only by coincidence you could say that it shares the letter with the functions m dot and m2 dot. The other confusing thing is that, counterintuitively, m dot designates the larger number in a pair of numbers, and m2 dot the smaller, not the other way around. As a mnemonic device, we can think of m dot as designating the number one number, and that's why m1 dot designates the larger number. With these points in mind, let's turn to the data statements separately first. We're going to need to find m2 dot of 100 and m, which will be the minimum between 100 and m. Statement one tells us that the larger of the two numbers, 100 and n, is m. From that, we can actually conclude that m is at least 100, even though we don't know exactly what n is. If n is less than 100, then the larger of the two numbers will be 100. If n is greater than 100, then m, the larger of the two numbers, will be what, whatever n is, whatever that value is, but it will be greater than 100. Therefore, m must be at least 100. Plugging that in to the expression that we need to know about, m2 dot of 100 and m, we now are talking about the minimum number of 100 and a number that is at least 100. The minimum, therefore, will be 100. We're able to conclude a specific value to answer the question, so we have sufficient information. Statement 2 tells us something fairly similar. m now is the maximum value, m1 dot, of 100 and m. Similar logic allows us to conclude that once again, m is at least 100. This is the same conclusion we drew from statement 1, so we know that we will have sufficient information to answer the question. The correct answer is D.